How are you going? Let me ask you an important question. Have you got a passion? Have you got something that gets you out of bed early in the morning and keeps you up late at night? You need one. Because without one, you could wither away. And it's not just me saying this. This has been scientifically, medically proven. It's one of the things I learned talking to some great people today about their podcast. The podcast is called Dr. Roger and Friends, The Bright Side of Longevity. It's not for old people. It's for people of any age. And the podcast itself is just a really nice chat between three very different but very interesting and engaging people. It's like eavesdropping on these people chatting over a coffee. In fact, they say that's how the the show is supposed to work. You can kind of join their clique. And don't we all want a group of really interesting friends and some great conversation? That's what this podcast is all about. You'll find out more about them as you meet them. And they're doing some great work and changing people's lives all over the world. Enjoy my chat with them. I tried to kind of swoop in and be part of that great little click they've got going that is their podcast. I don't know if I matched the vibe or whether I sounded like an outsider, but it was good to talk to them. And they're trying to make a difference, but in a fun and entertaining way. This is my chat with Dr. Roger and friends about their podcast, The Bright Side of Longevity. How do you guys know each other? Well, I guess I'll start. Uh, we, uh, we, my brother and I had formed a company uh, called Masterpiece Living, which was to partner with senior living communities to help people age in a better way. And uh, we met Teresa shortly after forming that because she was working in one of those communities. Remember Teresa? And, and uh, we were actually vying to become the consultant provider for that the system of senior living communities that she worked with and she was on the the uh, the committee that was to select and um, luckily for us she was on that committee because uh, she uh, the committee selected us and then we began working together and then she jumped ship to our company from their company luckily we did that and um, Teresa I think you uh, brought in Danielle I'll let you tell I did. I did find Danielle thanks to a mutual friend um, looking for a great writer. And Danielle came highly recommended and she's been in our on our team ever since. And the podcast idea came much later, but we've been working together for a number of years. Yeah. I think yeah. it's uh, for us, Teresa, it was it's probably been like 15 years almost. I think know? so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm 10 years because I, I like to joke that I came to the company through the back door because I would get these little projects from different from the sales and the ops. And after like about a couple of years had gone by, they're like, all of a sudden they're like, oh, well, I guess she's not going anywhere. We might as well make her part of the team. <laughs> so I just I just was there long enough where they just assumed I should always be there. And maybe, it was maybe it had something to do with your skills too. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. So but, when you, but, when you got together, was that for the podcast, or were you working on something else through Roger's company at the time? Danielle, we, Roger and I were working on. Um, he wrote the book "Live Long, Die Short: A Guide to Healthy Longevity." And um, so anyway, we I started working with him because he was traveling all over promoting the book. So I was kind of managing the campaign, and that's kind of. I think where we started working together uh, more closely in 2014 and on. So you then... were all working together in various capacities, but in the same area in this field of of working senior care, that kind of thing. Yeah, more like uh, more like uh, longevity and successful aging type of thing. We were in the mostly our partners were people who were living independently in, in, within a, a retirement community. So they were healthy and for the most part, well, there were, of course, some that were not. And they, they these communities had the capacity to handle them, you know, move into assisted living or to 
uh, skilled nursing. But for the most part, they were independent. So what, what we were all doing together, and this is way before the podcast, is working in, within this company to build content, write content, film content, and to, to help people age in a better way. Great. So then the podcast then just became another vehicle to get the message out and, and, and help the community get together and share things that you discovered. Exactly. Whose who idea was it, guys? I've forgotten. <laughs> Whose idea was know. it? Does anybody remember? Somebody claim it. I don't know. It I, was Roger's idea. And Roger, maybe it would be helpful. Can you talk a little bit about the MacArthur Foundation and the components of aging? Because I think that would kind of set the stage for what we do because it's it's a little different than, than what most people offer uh, senior living communities. Okay, I'll so be happy. You're the to host, do. and I'm asking the question. I'm sorry. No, that, that's you're that's allowed. Hey, this is a this is a discussion. We can just chip in with whatever whatever we think will help get the word out about the podcast. Because podcast radio is a radio station that only broadcasts podcasts, and podcast radio's sole goal is to help with discovery of podcasts. Because that's the hardest thing. Because there are millions of podcasts out there, and there are millions of people who would enjoy them it's just bringing the two together so anything we can do to help people discover this podcast let's just do it it doesn't matter who's hosting it danielle don't worry about that <laughs> well it's probably a good idea to talk about our pedigree because what brought a uh, a physician military guy uh an almond farmer skydiver <laughs> <laughs> that's and going way back and a spiritual guru uh you know uh coach writer from florida and uh, and teresa lives in california and i live in massachusetts so we couldn't be any further apart you know? <laughs> so what did well uh the story goes my brother uh, was the cfo of the macarthur foundation when they did a 10 year long study on aging why did some people age in a better way and others didn't uh, they studied it uh, from about mid 80s to mid 90s. And what they found really changed everything, because what they found was that it was your lifestyle and the choices that you made holistic, you know, the physical choices, intellectual, social and meaning and purpose. Those were the things that uh, determined up to 70 percent of how we age uh, rather than genes or luck or anything. So uh, here's a good story. So uh, Jonas Salk. The famous Jonas Salk. The polo was the vaccination. Board. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Well, Polio, uh, yeah. He was on the board, and when they had presented their results, my brother and I and he uh, shared a cab to O'Hare Airport in Chicago. And it was Jonas who uh, sort of stimulated my brother to think about applying what they had learned. So a few years later, he got a few people together, which included me. I was coming out of the military. And then it grew from there. And then we grabbed Teresa, we grabbed Danielle, we grabbed a lot of very, very talented people. And um, it's uh, it's been going on quite a while, Masterpiece Living. So basically, we're, we're, first of all, making people aware that it's their choices that really determine mostly how you age that it's holistic, it's everything. It's not only the physical, it's the intellectual, social, and spiritual, or meaning and purpose. And and then we partner with uh, these retirement communities so that they become places where this is more likely to happen. And we do it through content, we do it through training, education. Uh, and so uh, it's, uh, it's sort of a cultural shift that goes on within these communities. And, uh, you know, the new older adult, uh, which I am rapidly approaching to be in that time when I would think about doing that, something like that. They're going to want something totally different than the past. And so it's got to be cool and it's got to be uh, something that is uh, stimulate them, help them keep them healthy so they can continue to uh, have new experiences and live life to the fullest. So what are the top three things that somebody should do as they're aging to make sure that they have a, a longer life with more quality in it? Teresa, you take that one. I would love to take. So I'd say if if I could give you just one, Graham. Okay, sure. It would be, yeah, let's boil that down. Believe that your future of aging is going to be a time of possibility and growth. If, if there was one, I would give you that one. Because if the research is very clear that if we believe that it will be a time of decline and dependence, it indeed would be. It will be. And on the other hand, if we believe it's a time of opportunity and growth, um, it will be that. And so that sounds so simple, but the research 
shows that it's absolutely true. So is it about planning? Because I know, I know people, I know people who were approaching their 60s and I mean, as many years ago, and they were telling me, oh, you know, when I retire, when I retire, when I retire, when I retire, but they didn't really have a plan. They were just going to play more golf or they were going to do this and that. But and I said, well, have you got a plan for what you're going to do with your day? Oh, no, when I retire, when I go, and all of them without fail said, I don't have time to do anything. <laughs> it's because you don't have a plan. Is, is, it a, is, is the planning important? It, it is important, but let me give you an example of, of just believing that it's a time of, of possibility. So two women fall, slip on ice, break ankles, and both require rehab. Um, one believes that it's the beginning of the end, that this is what comes with aging. And so she only puts half effort into rehab. She falls into depression and it indeed is the beginning of the end for her. The other believes that it's just a, a curveball that life, as we know, throws at times. And she uses the, the downtime in rehab to study a new language and plan a trip overseas. And then she works toward her goal, right? Because she doesn't believe it's the beginning of the end. She believes that life throws curveballs. And the degree to which, you know, we are living these this lifestyle that Dr. Roger um, so recommends, then we're going to weather that storm and come out the other end really beautifully. So how is imp how important is it then to keep the mind active? Because recently we've been told that, you know, doing puzzles and, and that kind of thing is really important. Is that really important? I think that's talking about trying to fight off dementia. But just overall, is that really important? I hope the puzzles are. I just finished a 2000 piecer. <laughs> I thought I would go crazy. Uh, it is. It definitely is because the, the, you know, there's so much new research that just keeps coming and coming and it's all positive. And that's hence the bright side of longevity. That's why we talk about it that like that. Yeah. Uh, the brain is not what I just learned in medical school back in the 70s that and I learned then it was an organ. It grew to be its best. And then for most of your life, you were just losing neurons and losing capability, you know, hitting your head, getting older you know, being in a low oxygen environment, whatever. Uh, and it was all loss. Well, now we know that the brain has a characteristic called neuroplasticity. And this is the lifelong ability of the brain to rewire itself in response to an injury or to sickness or to what we want it to do. So hence, when you're a half full person and you're positive uh, and you have expectations, that are that are positive that you know I, I know I can do this uh, that this stimulates the brain to grow these new connections and uh, they grow more rapidly when you learn new things at any age any age the lifelong ability to grow new brain tissue in fact now we can see it on brain scans so Graham you're a talented guy you play music and everything but you probably don't know Chinese right no I don't so, know Chinese <laughs> So you start to learn Mandarin, you know, and uh, we take a brain scan before you do that. You start learning it. We take a brain scan in three months and your brain's going to start to be bigger and thicker in the language area because of these new connections. Now we can see it with brain scans and that's what's going on. So that so, you, you know, Teresa talked about expectations. Remember Henry Ford's uh, uh, quote there? If you think you can do something or you think you cannot do something, you're probably right. You know, so that's what we're talking about here. So absolutely keep learning new things for the brain. Like Danielle, that's all she does is new things. New <laughs> things, new things, new things. Yeah, but you know what? There's there's the caveat to that is people say crossword puzzles. So it's not retrieving stuff that you already know. Like a crossword puzzle, you're retrieving something you've learned. It has to be, or it's not playing a song that you can play in your sleep. It has to hurt. <laughs> I mean, right. you know, this is why I play right. the piano terribly. And every time I screw up, I'm like, Roger says I'm getting smarter. I'm going to keep doing this. <laughs> so, um, yes. So it's just it, it has to, you know, make you think, because once you've learned something completely, it has to be challenging. So you have to move on to something else. So, yes, growth. Right. Is there's a sweet spot, right? It has to hurt. Yes. But there's kind of a, a 
sweet spot of a little bit uncomfortable, but not so uncomfortable that you just want to throw your hands in the air and say, forget yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. We'll yeah. tell you a story. Uh, Ellen Langer is a, is a psychologist at Harvard. And, uh, and, and she did a study back in the 70s, and she took 70-year-old men, they were in their 70s, and she recreated a place from the 1950s and brought them there. And they had to discard everything that reminded them of the current time. And they went back in time, you know, with old cars, old clocks, old radios, no TV, you know, three stations on TV at best. And, uh, and before she did, she took photos of them, hearing tests, visual tests, even blood tests. They were there a week and everything changed for the better. They were even looking better. They, I mean, their families saw new, the new photos and couldn't believe how, the, how young they looked. Their behavior, how they managed their luggage, how much they moved, you know, just how vibrant they were. Everything, hearing, vision improved, blood parameters improved. In one week, this is just about expectation. And this launched her whole career uh, on positive psychology and what the brain can bring to reality. It, it when you want to it her her latest book is counterclockwise i highly recommend it what i like about your podcast and although it does have a positive title the bright side of longevity when i first sat down to listen to a few episodes i thought nah, this is for old people but i see how i go but it's really not because the three of you just have like and you say with coffee you just sit down and and it's like eavesdropping on a really nice conversation but with three really interesting people. Did you design it that way from the start or did it end up that way? It was a night, oh. the, oh, you froze for a moment. Oh, you froze for a second. Yeah, am I back or am I still frozen? Yeah, Sorry. you're good. So it was a little push me, pull you. So Roger wanted it to be kind of like your shows are very laid back, just have a conversation. Um, me being the planner, it's like, no, we got to have a direction and a script. So somewhere between that, we found that common ground. So we have a little bit of a structure when we have guests on the show, but enough of I've gotten more flexible to kind of go with the flow a little bit. Right. Yeah. You have the topic each each time. Yeah. And then yeah. you just kind of dance around that, and there are certain points you need to get out. Bullets, yeah, is that is that how it's done? Yeah, yeah, it, it is because you know I'm I'm kind of a come as you are guy, and uh, Danielle's not, and Teresa's in between. So I, Teresa, I think really uh, functions as the sort of director. <laughs> Danielle is the one who <laughs> gives a script. <laughs> not really, not a script, but you know, just a little more organization than I would normally have. And you absolutely need when you have three people, if you're not going to talk over yourself and you want to cover things. So we go in with, uh, uh, you know, a rough idea of what we want to achieve. And uh, then we hope that it's, uh, and, and it's casual. And uh, most of our guests like that. I think some are a little uncomfortable. You know, they look like a little more structure. You've probably seen that yourself, <laughs> your interviewees. But uh, we we have fun, and it is. Uh, I'm uh, thanks for that feedback because that's what we're trying to achieve. Really? Oh, good. That, that, that's genuinely uh, how I thought of it. You know, I, I went into it thinking mm, it's the word, the bright side, and then it's longevity, and you think, oh, okay. And then you listen to it, and you think, oh, this is really fun. This is three people who like chatting about things. Three interesting people. So, have you, the distance that you're apart now, have you always recorded it apart like that? Wow. Yes. So Massachusetts, uh, California, and Florida. So we're talking thousands of miles. Yes. Yes, indeed. Thank thank God for technology, right? We always intended to get together, but, uh, you know, we, we didn't for the first, what, six, seven months, and then COVID hit. So, you know, we're not traveling. So uh, we, we had a good uh, sort of uh, trial run with... Uh, you were ahead of it. Yeah, <laughs> people had to learn it quickly when COVID hit. You were already there. <laughs> it helps that we've spent so much time together in person yeah. over the years. I think that helps us a lot. And you do it this and way. Can you see each other? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you do. You do. So you can. You, you can see if something's working or if something's annoying someone. <laughs> I've been in both of those rooms that they're in there. Uh, <laughs> they haven't been where I am down in my basement in Massachusetts, but you know. <laughs> right, but there's never been a show where you've all been in the same room together. 
No, uh, no but Roger has been here in Florida. I uh, see. When you, he's come down that way because we've used this studio to do some like educational videos and stuff for Masterpiece. So we've occasionally sat side by side, but Teresa's always been remote. Roger, I mean, I'm nicking this from Seinfeld, but aren't you at an age where you are legally required to live in Florida now? <laughs> <laughs> God's waiting room, Graham. <laughs> okay, now who came up with the the three P's in a podcast? Because I love that. That, that would be our help. colleague Neil Miller, who um, is has the most creative brain when it comes to things <laughs> like this. Yeah. And what's been the most rewarding thing from doing it that you've got out of it? Because people don't do that amount of podcasts if they're not getting anything personally from it what's been the most personally rewarding for each of you that's kept it going well uh we uh we use it as content for our uh, our our partner community retirement communities so that we periodically get feedback from the residents there particularly during this time of covid where uh they uh, they're, they're very grateful for it and they they like being entertained and also coming out with a with a positive attitude. I don't know you guys. You have. I would I would say, Graham, the research has not failed us. That there's been about three decades of research about longevity and how to live, you know, a healthy, long, purpose filled life, and that research isn't necessarily common knowledge for folks. And we, and we still don't always, even what we know, we don't necessarily apply. So there's two gaps that we bridge with our hopefully engaging conversation is bringing that research into common knowledge and then helping people apply it. And so for me, that's what's most fun and talking about longevity and heaven forbid we use the word aging for what it is, which isn't, which to us is yes, life throws curveballs and we don't pretend that it doesn't, but, but isn't it great to be alive? And if we're all going to live however many years, why shouldn't they be filled with meaning and purpose and filled with opportunities instead of having people think it's about decline? Because it's not about decline. The research is very clear. For me, that's what's important about this podcast. Yeah. And I, I always say I wish now I'm 48, but I wish I had learned about the components of aging well at age 30. There are so many things I would have done different with diet and exercise and l like all the things that you know we're doing now I would have liked to have done back then and I feel like this is not just for people who are 50 plus this is stuff that you can begin utilizing at 10 years old you know um, it, it, and so for me personally I also gravitate toward positive psychology and purposeful living and figuring out what you want in your life and so I really like having this opportunity to, to talk about it and bring it to people because I get sick and tired of people in my age bracket saying, oh, I'm, I'm too old for that. You know, like I'm playing the piano and I'll open the Rosetta Stone and learn a few words in French and they'll talk about their kids doing that and I'll say, well, why don't you do that? It's like, oh, that's for them, I'm too old. And, right. I, and, and, it and just, that's the absolute different. wrong way to look at it. Yeah. it. It is indeed, you know, there is a, there is a requirement for listening you have to have a pulse you know <laughs> <laughs> we really designed at least the what we talk about is so fundamental as three as, as danielle said you could be 10 years old but and so in fact we had my grandson on recently just to talk about his reaction as a as a young adult uh 17 uh with covid and uh, being in high school and then college you know and uh, just to, so it, it you know the Aging and you know longevity and being healthy is uh, is a topic at, at, you know that we all should be concerned about and are in fact the younger generation the research is telling us is much more attuned to health and and their longevity than my generation or even the latest generation when they were and you know in their teens and twenties. You're absolutely right about. You know, because if you ever think at a, at a stage in your life when you did try something new, just how how good it felt and how, particularly if you got right into it, how it just, 
it it made you feel alive. And I can remember, you know, I started playing the guitar really late. I think I was about 22. You know, most kids start, pick up a guitar in their early teens. I was about 22. But I can remember that being great. And more recently, after COVID hit, as Danielle would know, I changed to uh, narrating audio books and absolutely love it. You know, and the things I'm doing with that and... There's a buzz you get from that. Why, why has that, do you think, you know, that attitude of, oh, I'm too old to try something new. You know, I'm 56, which isn't, as far as I'm concerned, old. In fact, I demand a recount because that can't be right. <laughs> um, well, they're going to give you 2020 back because, you know, that's... <laughs> oh, okay. oh, that's good to know. <laughs> that's good to know. Yeah. But but why why do you think we ended up with this, that, that once you get to... A, you know, some people over 30 will not try some things because they think, you know, that they're, they're too old. for. where has this come from? I think I know where I think it's come from. That's generally the media. I mean, uh, just ageism. It, you know, women are not supposed to age, but then they have plastic surgery and, oh, your plastic surgery is terrible. Did she or didn't she? You know, so we have this, I think, society puts a lot of pressure on people to stay young. Um that's my opinion. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really an ageism that has been in the world for some time. And certainly my generation and all, even, as you know, pre, pre, generations after mine, it was not a malevolent type of thing of ageism. Maybe it was initially, but not now. But it is there and it's everywhere. It's in the media. It's that the expectations are low. And we've already talked what happens when the expectations are low. And so we rage against that. Uh, you know, with research, with data, with examples, uh, with humor. And uh, and I think that when you learn something new and it, it, it gives you a sense, first of all, of possibility, of growth, of purpose, of meaning. And uh, and, you know, the other thing that we're learning it, and I don't know how many shows it it's, seems to come up in almost in every episode about being mindful, you know, right. being in the moment. Yeah. You know, we, you know, we're such a production oriented society, uh, you know, all the Western world. And uh, so our mind is always somewhere else doing lists or, you know, or ruminating over a failure or a success or whatever. And we're very rarely living life in this moment. And that, that is so rewarding when you can just take a few seconds. And when you're learning something new, that's where you are. I asked mm -hmm. artists, you know, what happens to time when you're painting and I tried it myself during COVID, and it's true. They said there's no sense of time; it just goes away, as with the guitar, probably. Yeah, absolutely, you you start learning guitar and you start practicing, and then you, you realize you you've been playing for four hours, and you're like, wow, you know, you, you literally forget to eat. You know, if you re whatever it is, you whatever you get into, away you go. And you're happy and content, and yeah. some people are joyful even. I so I find playing the guitar gives a similar afterwards a similar feeling to meditation and i think it's because you're concentrating on something you're focused on that one thing and you everything else is all that clutter and self-talk and everything has disappeared for the that time that you're doing it true. yeah absolutely yeah. yeah we forget to be mindful and we also stop dreaming you know kids really have it the best because they live in the moment and they're always dreaming about what's next and for some reason I don't know what age we stop daring to dream and we stop asking each other about one another's dreams. Like at what age does that happen? And it shouldn't happen. Like we should always ask um, people about what they're, what's next for them. What are they dreaming about? What do they want to be next? Right. When do we stop asking those questions? Is, is the education system got to take some of the blame here? I believe. I believe that uh, the world can be hard on dreamers uh, because, again, we're production oriented and, you know, be practical. Do, you know, don't study something you'll make money at because that's the, uh, the measure of success. Uh, all of that sort of narrative is going on. And uh, I think it beats it beats us down. I wouldn't say just the education system. I, th I think the whole environment I think it's getting better, but uh, it can be rough. It is getting better. When I when I grew up, my parents were very. Uh, I don't know if you know much about Northern England, but you go up there and you put your you put your watch back twenty years. Um, <laughs> it, it's uh, I grew up in a very working class environment just outside Liverpool, and uh, 
where I wanted to be, you know, as a kid. Like that, when you're a kid, there's no limit, you know. One minute you want to be an astronaut, next minute, you know. And I started seriously at one stage saying I'd love to be a photographer and all that. And it was pretty much knocked out of me, and I was told I was going to be an electrician. And, of course, I failed miserably at that. <laughs> and uh, and it wasn't until, and, until I left home. In fact, I didn't actually leave home. My parents emigrated to New Zealand, the other side of the world, and um, they ended up coming back to Britain and left me there. I was 21, so I always say I, I didn't leave home. I was abandoned on the other side of the world. <laughs> But but when that happened, that's when I started to learn to play the guitar and I started to do all these things that for some reason, I, it was my fault, but I felt that I was being held back because I was still in this Northern English working class environment, even though I was on the other side of the world. But that's when well, I really yeah. started to find out who I was and, and what I wanted to be. And I, I think today's parents are not, like that but parents do have a responsibility i think don't you to 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 tell kids that look just keep on dreaming and so what if you don't get there and and like that i don't know if you've seen that jim carrey thing that uh speech he gives at the university and he says you can fail at what you don't like you know so why not <laughs> fail at something you enjoy you know yeah. it's funny my dad wanted me to go to business school and become an accountant which even was progressive at that time when women were just supposed to go to college and get married after you weren't supposed to have a career you're supposed to be a homemaker so the fact that he wanted me to be an accountant and he's and i was thinking well i wanted to do theater and i wanted to write and do all those creative things and he would tell me constantly how poor i was going to be he was right I was I spent the better part of my youth poor, but I'd rather be doing what I loved every day. And, and but it eventually comes around. Yeah. Like you said, if you love it and you stick with it and it's also what you value, I probably would be wealthier as an accountant, but I'd in, be miserable. <laughs> in their defense, the generation had gone through the depression, you know, and they saw what, what could happen if you didn't have skills and uh, yeah. and what power. Is a lot of immigrants came from very poor situations. So, I mean, I get it why they did that, but uh, the the unfortunate thing was that you know they sort of uh, circled the wagons around their kids and, and with possibility. And but uh, my, was... my my issue is that like if that is the mindset, then they're going to pass that on to their kids, the ones who don't manage to break free from it. And then when they do get to be in later life, a according to the research that you've talked about already, that could really affect their health you know and in fact they could they could lose years literally because they haven't got the mindset of well let's just try it you got to have passion you know you got to have uh, something that uh, you know i think it was joyce said be better to pass boldly into the other world you know in the you know with some sort of dreams and passion than to wither with age and uh boy he nailed it that's in the dubliners i think he wrote that and and uh without that we do we wither and uh, and the possibilities and the dreams that we have are very limited and it's all about endurance you know just like getting through it and then if you're very religious saying okay i hope after in heaven it'll be nice you know so sacrifice earth for an afterlife i mean you know so it can get a, be a pretty dark story which we in the bright side of longevity just wanted to spell <laughs> it's about having the courage to be a beginner too i think that i think that's the first step that we're talking about is being willing to be bad at something and that takes courage not everybody's got that right but we can create that in the right environment. And I think we're also talking about environment. Graham, your environment growing up was very different until age 22. And then you created your own environment of possibility and opportunity. And that's some of the work that we do is helping people realize the power that their environment plays on them and then help them to try to create an environment where they are more likely to make those choices and live that lifestyle that's going to result in longevity. Yeah. Do you have a uh, do each of you have a favorite episode or is this like choosing a favorite child? <laughs> uh, I can see Danielle thinking. Uh, I, I have two. You, you have, have two. two. OK, what are they, Danielle? So the first one I loved uh, with Jane Parker, uh, who's a friend of ours and a psychotherapist. And we brought her on right as COVID hit and nobody knew how it spread. Everybody was, you know, locked down. And um, and she got on there and just really laid out some quality 
resources for people to kind of not lose their minds, how to how to um, navigate. And she would talk about, you know, finding glimmers and looking for for expressing gratitude, having a routine. She would talk about, you know, finding something creative and purposeful. And it was just very um, a, an uplifting episode. So I really enjoyed that one. And I, actually, that one, I think, is still our number one biggest episode. When I look at the numbers, that one is the one that's the top. And then the other one I like, it was part three. We did a three-part spirituality series. And in part three, we talked a lot about purpose and finding your personality traits and character strengths and figuring out because some people know what they want from the time they're born. And some people now are like, okay, I'm transitioning. I'm retiring. I'm no longer raising kids. Now, now what? And so that episode was really about finding, you know, the what's next and, and looking at life as Teresa was saying with like that curiosity, you know, what, what's possible. Teresa, My what are favorites are, are always when we talk about resilience and we've done this in a number of episodes. So I don't know that we can, I could pick just one, but I love when we talk about life throws curveballs and what resilience is and that it is a muscle that we can flex and, and build and um, grit. And, and I personally am learning a lot about post-traumatic growth these days. So I love any episode that we're, we're dealing with life's realities and giving people really practical tools to navigate. Those are always, always well, when they, when they, when they've come through something and they've come out the other side as a better person yeah i i like that kind of stuff too i worked for a long time for the bbc as a as a presenter of a of an all talk uh, breakfast show and um we i used to fall out with the producers a lot because i used to hate doing what i called tragedy porn where they would they would get someone who's something terrible has happened to them and they would just put them, you were supposed to interview them and just say, how did that make you feel? And like, hang on, isn't there a, aren't they supposed to, isn't it supposed to have a happy ending? I know that might sound corny, but what benefit do we get from hearing people who have, have had a really tough time at the time that it's still tough? Let's, maybe we could put them on and we could revisit them in 12 months time and see how they're doing. But, and I, I don't know about in the US, but in Britain, it's, it's not so bad now, but it used to be about, 10 years ago that used to be you just get so much of it on the tv and the radio and particularly from the bbc for some reason because they're mostly journalists and if it bleeds it leads and and that was they just used to put these people on as this tragedy porn and i used to hate it yeah, tragedy porn <laughs> you know you know and it, and it's a danger in that because uh, so many people go through their lives defined by a negative experience they define their lives and and to the extent that if indeed you could remove it or you try to remove it, they resist because their life's definition is around this particular event, even though it's negative. And if you take that away, there's a feeling that their very their very self, their very essence is being removed. This is a psychological thing talked very uh, by many psychologists, Eckhart Tolle in uh, The Power of Now mentions it. And it, it seems counterintuitive, but if you've seen the person, you know, who you know, and uh, you, you, you run into them periodically and always this, the, the car accident comes up, you know, yeah. or the house burning down comes up, or, you know, or the friend who uh, stole their money, you know, that just is a, is a continued theme. Yeah, there's a there's a lady I know. It was the um, it was in New Zealand. The drummer in my band in New Zealand, uh, he died a few years ago, and and she was. Uh, it became her whole thing that she was, you know, she lost Joe, and it was it was very sad. And she's over it now. I met her um, uh, about when I was in New Zealand in uh, in in was it February, and she's she's fine now. But for many years that defined her. And and it was like, come on, you've got to move on. You know, this you can acknowledge all the great things that happened when you were together. Maybe I don't know. You know? Yeah, well, we could go with the dark side of longevity, but that wouldn't be doing any good <laughs> to anybody. You know, so we choose the <laughs> right side. <laughs> that already exists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let's talk about other podcasts now. What other podcasts do you listen to for inspiration? Mm, I'm a big fan of the life coach school podcast. I think it's 
for me, it's one of the best out there. And I'm a, I'm a life coach and I'm certified through the life coach school. So perhaps a bit biased, but there's just such good um, information and such incredible value that's, that's there. So it's Brooke Castillo um, by uh, the life coach school podcast. That's probably my hands down favorite. Yeah. Who wants to go next? I don't have a favorite. It's it's when it, we're driving in the car, whatever John has on, and he'll and he puts on a whole variety of like the wait, wait, don't tell me. And there's one. Um, there's no such thing as a fish. There's yep. that he listens to. There's um, oh, there's one that the oatmeal put out recently that I was listening to, and I, I honestly can't pull them up off the top of my head because it's just you know. So there's not one that stands out for me if I'm being honest, other than our show because I'm biased. Of course. Well, we're gonna plug your and show. Your like... show of course. <laughs> to... that was, I wasn't fishing for and... that. I really, I seriously <laughs> wasn't. I was just Danny looking. Came to... late, Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, can I change my answer? Your show, the Pot Twenty. Stop digging, <laughs> Doctor Roger. What about you? Well, uh, my wife, first of all, uh, listens to uh, politics and especially of late. And there's one that's very positive. It's from a bunch of young people who worked in the uh, Obama administration. And they're very bright young men and they're very uh, they're very astute. And even in these um, uh, which for most of us feel were dark, dark times, uh, they were entertaining and positive. Uh, it was sort of like the bright side of politics, you know, so. That was excellent. And uh, but we also my wife and I drive a lot. Uh, we um, more lately because we don't take airplanes and uh, and we drive to Arizona every year for a month or so. And so that's a long drive. And in the past, in the military, we've gone across the U.S. maybe 20 times driven. So we like uh, sort of periodic uh, podcasts that tell stories. Uh, and, uh, one I remember, and I'd forgotten the, the title of the podcast, but it talked about a murder that had happened in West Cork, uh, in, in Ireland. And, uh, and so the sort of periodic mis- mystery type of things that can hold our attention over thousands of miles. <laughs> I think they call those the narrative podcasts. Uh, I think narrative serial podcast. is probably the, the most famous example of that. Uh, PBS makes some wonderful ones, and I think uh, This American Life does a, a, like a three short stories, but they're, they're, they're narrative stories. But you like the open-ended, the long-form, many-episode ones, yes. just yes. to keep you going right. when you're on the road. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, well, what's next then for the Bright Side of Longevity podcast? What have you got coming up? Well, despite any changes that might be going on in the in the world or in what we do, you know, we're 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 uh, we're getting more high tech. We're going to be reaching out to individuals in our business that we're in together, and so the podcast is right in line with that, uh, reaching out to individuals. So uh, we we're we're going to stick together no matter what, and uh, I at least I want to. I I feel my stocks a lot higher with these two very smart and very well educated and experienced women they you know they they're 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 coaches they're they're masters level and some you have a couple masters don't you danielle i don't know yeah yeah anyway, <laughs> anyway I, i'm, I'm from my point of view we're going to continue we're going to continue with a positive message we're going to uh continue with uh i i think uh, the mood in the u.s right now can can use a lot of positivity, half full uh, type of approach to life and uh, and and make sure that someone isn't defining themselves by negative experiences. So I think more than ever, our message can be positive if 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 not for well, it is for health, but just for outlook and uh, and uh, just just a, just a whole positive view of uh, what can happen now, you know, where we're going. So I intend to, to stay as, as long as uh, I've got a few neurons working and, as, uh, <laughs> and, and they'll tolerate me. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Roger, Danielle and Teresa, thank you so much for being on the Pod 20 and congratulations on a terrific podcast, which at any stage of life is important. It's uplifting. It's a nice chat you can eavesdrop on. And uh, it's called The Bright Side of Longevity with Dr. Roger and Friends. Thank you, Graham, very much. It was a pleasure.